What's the absolute best DC to DC charger for powering your devices on the go? EcoFlow, Bluetti, Peakron. Today we're settling this debate once and for all. This tech is exploding right now and for good reason. Nobody wants their epic adventure cut short by dead batteries. I installed this Blue Eddy Charger 1 in my Toyota Sienna minivan camper. And I also installed this EcoFlow alternator charger in my Jeep Gladiator. And one thing is for certain, and that is that alternator chargers are an excellent way to take a little bit of that extra power from your car's alternator and charge your off-grid batteries. And now we have the Peakron Smart Car Charger. And in today's video, since I've already installed those other two devices, I'm going to install this device inside of this Nissan Pathfinder, but I also want to do a showdown between the EcoFlow alternator charger, the Blue Eddy Charger 1, and this Peakron Smart Car Charger. For this comparison, I've chosen three categories. Price, performance and compatibility. And to make this comparison as fair as possible, I'm gonna provide the stats, the performance, the price, and I wanna ask you, the viewer, to make the decision on which one is the winner. And now to get this comparison started, I'm gonna do a 10 second installation of this Peacron Smart Charger in this Nissan Pathfinder. <laughs> So I got everything plugged in. As like all of these charging systems, this one does have what they call a startup voltage that you can set. This one is a manually set voltage, whereas the Blue Eddy Charger 1 and the EcoFlow alternator charger are both controlled by the app. And the options go from 12 all the way up to 14 volts. It's so cold out that this volt ohm meter, I don't know what's going on with it, but it is just not working. I just changed the batteries as well. So I'm gonna have to rely on the vehicle's voltage readout from the OBD2 sensor to tell what the voltage is. I was hoping to test the voltage here because this is where the device is and that's where I wanna know precisely what voltage is going into the device to account for any voltage drop from the cables running from the battery all the way to the back of the car. Now let's hit the power button. And what I wanna see from the power button is, will it start showing anything into the this Blue Eddy Elite 200 V2 that I have it plugged into right now. We're not pulling anything from the Blue Eddy with that 13 volt setting. Let's go get the car started and see what happens. And I was hoping to get this before it kicked in, but I just saw, oh, and in fact, this battery, which has been in my garage, is actually too cold to charge right now. Let me go find another battery and see if I can get some power into it. But I'm not sure if I caught it on the camera. And right as I was getting back here, I did see 420 volts before that low temperature protection kicked in on this one. So I just hooked up this EcoFlow Delta 2 Max. Oh, and unfortunately, I am also at a low temperature here. So now I've got the EcoFlow River 3 Max Plus hooked up. Now, the interesting thing here is the River 3 Max Plus does have a solar power limitation. I want to see what I bump up to here, and I believe it is that 220 watts. So unfortunately, 220 watts is about all I'm gonna get with this device. So while we wait for one of those power stations to warm up, let's go look at the specs on the Blue Eddy Charger 1 and the EcoFlow alternator charger. The Blue Eddy Charger 1 accepts between 13.8 and 27.6 volts at 50 amps max. And its output can be regulated between 50 volts and 56 volts at 10 amps in the Bluetooth app. And what that boils down to for regular terms is about 580 watts of maximum output output from the Blue Eddy Charger 1. I don't have the EcoFlow alternator charger hooked up because I no longer have the Jeep, but I had it in there for a few months. And during that time, I did not have any problems with it. In fact, so far, I have not had any problems with any of these alternator chargers. The EcoFlow alternator charger puts out 800 watts. However, it is primarily only compatible with EcoFlow's devices that use that XT150 plug. Earlier in the summer, I saw on some of EcoFlow's literature that they plan to come out with an MC for adapter cable that could hook up to your power station. But since this summer, I have not seen or heard anything else about that cable. And the literature said that when that cable comes out, 
it would limit the charging output of the EcoFlow alternator to 500 watts. So I've got this Delta 2 Max. It's been warming up for about an hour now. Let's check it out. Currently, I'm getting 340 watts into the Delta 2 Max. The problem here is that the cable that I have, the MC4 cable, is a standard XT60. However, the Delta 2 Max has an XT60i input, and those XT60i inputs are designed to protect your car outlet from the power station, but because I don't have the XT60i going into it, it's not pulling more than eight amps right now. And before I get too much further, the input voltage for this Pcron is between 12 and 30 volts. It is changeable based on this little dial on the side. Then it does have a fixed output of 42 volts at 13 amps max for a total of 500 watts. And if you wanna maximize that 500 watts from the Pcron smart charger, you will need a device that can optimize at that 42 volts and 13 amps because that output voltage of the Pcron smart charger is fixed at 42 volts your power station has to be able to accept 42 volts. This Delta 2 Max is rated to accept between 11 and 60 volts, and it is also rated at up to 15 amps. That means that you should be able to get the maximum capability from the Pcron Smart Charger. My last note on the Pcron before I move on to overall compatibility is that in most of the tests that I have seen online, the maximum output is about 440 watts. I haven't really seen any devices hitting that 500 max for sustainable load. If we're strictly talking capabilities, the EcoFlow alternator charger puts out 800 watts. You can get that 800 watts consistently from essentially when you turn on the vehicle until when you shut it off. The Blue Eddy Charger 1 will put out a consistent 580 watts and its voltage is variable for its output for several devices. Finally, that Pcron Smart Car Charger puts out about 440 volts. Yes, it does say 500 watts on the packaging. However, I have not seen it actually put out 500 watts. If you have, let us know in the comments. Now, when I talk about compatibility, what I mean by that is what power stations can I hook up to that alternator charger? When it comes to the Blue Eddy Charger 1, it has that 15 to 56 volt output. You can change that output based on essentially any power station that's out there on the market today. So that Blue Eddy Charger 1 is the most compatible with anything. Now, the Pcron does have that 42 volts and 13 amps max output. I have checked most of my power stations. A lot of the smaller ones are limited to 30 volts, so make sure you check your device's input capability before you get that Pcron Smart Car Charger. And then finally, the EcoFlow Alternator Charger, in my opinion, is the least compatible with other devices, at least until EcoFlow puts out that MC4 adapter cable. The XT150 that comes out of the current alternator charger from EcoFlow is essentially only compatible with about four or five of their larger power stations. However, EcoFlow does have some pretty robust power stations. So if you are stuck in the EcoFlow ecosystem, that alternator charger is the best for those power stations. And I have one bonus comparison that I'm gonna make at the end. However, the cheapest of the three is the Pcron coming in at around $150. I've seen it fluctuate plus or minus about $30 right Right there and the Blue Eddie Charger 1 I've seen anywhere between $400 and about $250. And finally, I've seen the EcoFlow alternator charger from anywhere between $400 and $600, depending on if you buy it alone or with another EcoFlow power station. And a fourth bonus comparison that I want to point out is that the EcoFlow alternator charger is essentially a sealed device. It is designed not necessarily so that it can be submerged in water, but it is a lot more resilient because it doesn't have any fans or any openings when it's all plugged up. However, the Pcron and the Blue Eddy do have a little fan port. The reason for this is that the EcoFlow uses that gallium nitride technology, whereas those other two essentially use the same metals that have been around on any other charger that's on the market. There are four other versions. If I do get my hands on them, I will make a follow-up video with those. Those are the Victron, the Renogy, the E-Taker, and then finally the DJI Car Charger. Of those, the E-Taker is the one that I look forward to testing the most, and that is because it has a thousand watt output, and it also accepts solar panels. So for some of those more robust devices, I'll be able to maximize my solar capability on the top of my minivan camper, along with the DC to DC charging for those more cloudy conditions. Now is the time to let us know in the comments which of these is the best overall? 
Is it the one with the cheapest price, the best compatibility, the highest power output? Is it one of the ones that I didn't test in today's video? Let me know, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in my next adventure.